Good afternoon. Welcome to Chicago. I heard some erroneous statements earlier. I just want to clarify. This is the greatest city <laughs> in the nation. I just want to put that out there. So I am Dr. Stephanie White. I'm the Chief Health Officer for Chicago Public Schools. And we're more than excited to be able to present today on our bold goal, bold goal, bold, bold goal, and big ideas for our city. And joining me on the stage are Rochelle Davis, Healthy Schools Campaign. Chicago Park District, uh, Colleen Lamel Harmon, Wellness Manager, and just named Gold Medal Park District for the biggest class. So we're the Gold Medal Park District. Yeah. Some of you, I think, may have been in North Carolina. I'm uh, Michael Lang with the Chicago Park District Planning Department. I'm Samantha Stivers. I'm at the City of Chicago, the Mayor's Office. And I'm Brandon Lyles with the Chicago Park District Wellness Department. So in 2011, our mayor and our Department of Public Health released an ambitious public health, Chicago, public health agenda called Healthy Chicago. It focuses on 12 key priority areas of establishing and creating our, moving our city towards being the healthiest by the year of 2020. One of those priority areas is obesity. I am multitasking here. One of those areas is obesity. And our bold goal is about transforming the health of our city such that we have healthier citizens and we appropriately target what is our obesity issue. So we look forward to reducing obesity by 2020 by 10%. Additionally, we know that in order to accomplish this, this is not a health department issue, it's not a schools issue, it's a city issue. So the importance of interagency collaborations, leveraging our partnerships, public, private, nonprofit, this is all key to us moving the needle and creating this culture change and this big shift for our city, and that is exactly what it is. So from the perspective of the school district, Clearly, our responsibility is about educating our students. But what we know is that healthier students are better learners. And so if we provide them with the appropriate nutrients, the appropriate physical activity, they become healthier. And in the, in the space of the classroom, they will learn better. Research has shown that, and that has been a part of a great deal of the work that the city, the school districts have done. So in addition to two years ago, after 30 years of no daily recess in elementary schools, Bringing that back, this year we passed a policy for physical education so that all students K through 12 will get daily physical education after almost two decades of our 11th and 12th graders not receiving it. We've partnered with our other agencies about creating opportunities and access to space, and particularly with the park districts allowing, um, providing access for our students to get there, to have a place to be, and for our schools to be able to get this work done and this partnership. One thing that is key, and I think this gorgeous little boy really highlights that, is that Chicago Public Schools has students at a percentage of over 50% who are either overweight or, or, or obese, so the need with the school acting as the hub and center of our communities, the need to leverage that space to create healthier citizens as a part of our overarching goal for our city is extremely important. And so we're proud to be a part of that movement. I'm going to pass the mic and talk, and you'll learn about some of the innovative things that we're doing in the city. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, so I'm Rochelle Davis and I'm president of a healthy schools campaign and we have been we're very active working with Chicago Public Schools to get recess reinstated to expand P and, and to improve the nutritional quality of the food and as we started to try to figure out how to make sure that that is implemented we worked to try to address some of the barriers that schools faced and one of the clear barriers was the outdoor was the schoolyards Without recess or PE for decades, there was not a lot of investing going on. So Space to Grow, uh, so public agencies and nonprofits joined together to launch Space to Grow, greening Chicago schoolyards. And in addition to providing, I'll give you a 
little idea of, so this is Merrill Elementary School and this is what it used to look like. And as of last Saturday, this is the artist rendering, this is what it now looks like. So this is a world of difference and the impact that this will make on the school and on the community will be profound. And obviously one of our key challenges was how to find the financial resources to do this kind of transformation. And we learned that Chicago Public Schools was the largest landowner of impermeable surfaces. So we approached the Chicago Department of Water Management and the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District and we invited them to be part of this effort to transform these schoolyards with of course the stipulation that these schoolyards um, will capture stormwater. And so we have built that partnership. We have built those first four schools. We have selected the next six and as of last week, when the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District allocated an additional $15 million to this project, we expect over the next five years to leverage $51 million of public dollars to transform schoolyards in 34 schools across the city. The next step that we, we took on was opening up playgrounds and making them much more accessible for people to use. So in 2013, uh, the Chicago Park District, with the help of the City of Chicago and our other partners, launched a new program. The Park District alone, we own over 500 playgrounds within our, our larger collection, as well as CPS has about 500 as well. 300 of our own <coughs> playgrounds that we as the Park District have were over the age of 20. So very old, failing equipment, not, not built in a manner that promotes inclusivity. And so our goal over the next five years, beginning in 2013, was to renovate all 300 of these playgrounds. So basically every child in the city of Chicago will have a brand new playground within basically a quarter mile of their home. So this, uh, it, here's an example of one of the playgrounds. This playground was actually built in 1988. Really old equipment. Uh, we, uh, we also partnered with Friends of the Parks in terms of overall outreach. And uh, the Ann and Robert Lurie uh, Children's Hospital does a, a safety audit of all of our playgrounds. And so that helped us to identify the first, the first row, um, round of playgrounds that needed to be renovated. And so the new equipment that's provided, it's not only physically challenging, it provides a variety of different experiences, whether that's audio or sensory, that just really helps to um, provide kids an opportunity to play. Great. Um, so moving on to wellness, um, we have a lot of wellness initiatives in Chicago Park District, but I do have to say without our um, City agencies, we are lucky enough to have a mayor's office of interdepartmental task force on obesity. Um, you can't do it alone. So we have been able to, um, we've been doing the summer food program for quite a while, but we serve over 990,000 lunches, breakfast and snacks throughout the summer. Um, we recently are engaging back into the after school snack program because as Dr. White sa said, it's, we're, it's a great organization that the kids get bused to our park kids locations. Um, and then they actually will be getting some healthy snacks. And we put in a, a healthy food environment policy, an initiative um, a few years ago, and it just continues to grow. And so what that means is all food that we buy um, and we put through an RFP has to have a, a healthy guideline behind it. So whether it's dinner with Santa or um, you know sports banquets to breakfast with the bunny, um, all of them have to actually go through the wellness department, which is really fun for me. Um, and we make sure that they're all healthy. Um, our biggest accomplishment, I think, in the last few years was our healthy vending machines. So um, back when I, st I started back in 2001, and in 2005, we tried to redo our vending machines to be, have a few healthy options. And our vending company said no, no thank you. Um, so we really took an opportunity um, to change it when the contract came up. So right now, we have over 112 snack vending machines. All of them fit a healthy guideline policy. Um, and as a registered dietitian, I was able to look at both the American Heart Association, Alliance for a Healthier Generation, um, various organizations, and kind of tailor our own 
So there are healthy nuts as a healthy fat instead of saying nothing under 30% fat. Um, looking at sodium, looking at peanut free, looking at gluten free, looking at high fiber. And we put together a planogram with our contractor, Canteen Compass. Um, and then we also just recently um, have engaged in our beverage. So if you go to Chicago Park District, all of the beverage are, um, there's no sugar sweetened beverages in our machines. Um, yeah, so, so this is an extraordinarily comprehensive plan, and I want to make sure that you have time to at least okay. get one piece of feedback. Sure. So I will I uh, pace quicken this up. I can talk fast. So the other initiative that we did is we did team up with a lot of corporate partners, and we have engaged in a veteran-led Chips for Fitness. Brandon's one of our veterans. Um, we have some veteran-led fitness classes and then other non-veteran. We have 450 uh, classes each session, which is every 12 weeks, to offer low-cost quality, consistent fitness programming throughout the Chicago Park District. And then nutrition education is a huge part of that with fun with food being a hands-on. Cooking skill class is something we also offer. So at that point, um, I, we are all here to answer any questions that you have for us. Okay, so since this is a great example of how robustly the school and park agencies can work together <laughs> and take advantage of every single policy and infrastructure opportunity, I'm wondering if there's one quick comment or tip that any of the panelists might have, because we're over time, but I want to make sure there's time for one response. Dr. Pruitt? I don't know if it's so much a tip as much as congratulations. You've got a huge challenge, obviously. Um, I'm also the medical director to the associate population at Humana. And as you know, we have 54,000 people. Oftentimes, folks who come to our industry um, are very sedentary. And we have a 44% obesity problem with our community. So the challenge, but what you, what you did and what I heard, uh, it, which I think is a key message for all of us to think about, is that centralization and that pulling together and having strong leadership is probably what was a major driver here. So, you know, from a, a lessons learned standpoint, you know, as much as we say all healthcare is local and it's a ground up, if you don't have those central figures like the mayor who is here and all who are really leading the charge here, the chances of you all coming together and getting this pulled off was probably pretty slim, I would suspect. So uh, congratulations both on the leadership that you have here in Chicago and the job that you've done. Thank you. Thank you to Chicago and thank you to all the teams. We're going to give everyone a round of applause.